Hi all. Today let's see how we can use web workers and shared workers in an Angular application. As you know, JavaScript is a single threaded language. So basically, whatever code we write in our application, it will be executed in a single thread. Even the frameworks like Angular, React, everything, they will be running their application code in a single thread. So now we have an Angular 13 application. Suppose we have some calculation intensive code in our application. For example, here I have a function which generates a Fibonacci series to get a particular Fibonacci number when I provide the position of that number. This is a memory intensive operation and here actually I am calling this function within the own init of the app component. So now let's see what happens when we run our application. So you can see that actually the application takes some time for rendering. This is because when the Fibonacci number is getting calculated, actually the main thread which renders the application, it is getting blocked. This kind of memory intensive operation as well as the rendering of the page, actually all these run in a single thread. So because of this, the main thread gets blocked and the application performance gets impacted. Web worker is actually a concept in which we can generate multiple threads in our web application. So basically, we will be able to move out some of the memory intensive logic like for example generating the Fibonacci number we can move it to a separate thread so that our main thread which will take care of the rendering it won't be blocked so now let's see how we can add a web worker to our angular application for adding a web worker in an angular application we have the cli command ngg web worker and we can provide the location of the component in which we need to add the worker. So here I am giving the app. So it will create the worker in the app component. So the changes have been applied. Now let's go and see the different components. So we have an app worker.ts. So this is basically our web worker component. So the code which we need to execute in the worker, we can put it here in the app.worker.ts. So by default, some code has been added in our app.worker. So this includes a triple slash directive, which makes use of the reference so that it needs to make use of the web worker library. So here, if you go, this is the web worker d.ts. This will be used for compiling this particular file. And here we are adding the event listener on the message event and we are adding a callback so that whenever this worker receives a message from the main thread, that particular event will have a key called data and we are basically resolving that data and sending it back as a response to our main thread. So we make use of the post message method in order to send event back to our main thread. Similarly, if you go to our app component.ts, some additional code has been added. This is the code which will communicate with our worker thread. So the first check is we are checking whether the worker is defined. In case it is defined, then we will create a new worker and we are passing the URL which will con consist of the file name app worker along with the import meta URL. So we will see this shortly. We can add a console.log here so that when we run the application, we will be able to see what's the value. And here, after the uh, declaration or creating the worker instance, we are adding an on message handler. And again, we are adding a callback so that Whenever a message comes from the worker, we will be able to display this message. And initially, when our application starts up, we are sending a message hello to our worker thread. And here in the else condition, in case the worker is not supported, we need to provide a fallback. So now let's run this application. So our application has started. Now let's refresh it. So here we can see the import 
meta url which we displayed so it basically consists of the absolute path of our app component.ts and it tells what is the protocol we are using that's a file and once we start up our application you can see that once the application is started up we are sending a message hello from the main thread to our worker thread which in turn is captured by the event listener on the message and we are um, sending the message back to our main thread and this part we are consoling in our own message so that message we can see here so our worker thread is working similarly two more changes were added when we ran our cli command so one is inside our angular.json where in the build step we can see that a web worker ts config has been added similarly one has been added in our test as well and this is the ts config.worker.json which has been created for handling the compilation of our worker.ts when we create a worker thread in our application we need to keep some things in mind so one of the thing to keep in mind is that the worker thread will not be able to do any manipulation on the dom so in case we need to perform some things in the dom we need to keep the logic within the main thread itself similarly we will not be able to access any of the global objects like window within our worker thread in case we try to access it will throw an error and the global scope itself will be different within the thread and in case we need to access that within the worker we need to make use of the keyword called self all the window objects which are available within the main thread they won't be accessible within the worker only few of them will be available and we need to be careful while accessing the global object within our worker thread so now i have gone ahead and make some changes in our worker thread previously we were calculating the fibonacci number within our main thread in the ng on in it so since this function does not access the dom what i have done is i have moved that logic to within the worker thread so that the rendering won't be affected and the memory intensive operation will take part within the worker in the app component what i am doing is i have moved that automatically generated code to within a method called init worker and within the worker i am creating a new instance of the worker and here i am sending a message through post message that is having the data action generate fibonacci and the parameter is 45 so that's the position of the number and within the worker what i am doing is i am listening to the event and when i get the event i am logging it and i am taking the param from the data key within the event and i am generating the fibonacci number once the number is generated i will send it back to the main thread through the post message now once the main thread receives the data it will just display the result within our console so now let's go to the application i am refreshing the application you can see that the application got rendered immediately and here the worker message is showing like when the worker receives the instruction to do the calculation at that time the message is logged and after some time only the result from the worker comes back to the main thread but the thing to note is that the main thread is free to handle all the other requests from the user like in case i click anything during the uh, thread is calculating the fibonacci number it will be working properly this way we can free up the main thread so that it can concentrate more on the rendering and all the important user interacting actions while the memory intensive operation will be handled by the worker thread so in case you notice the message event this is the structure of the message which we sent and it has a key called data which will have the data which we will be able to send it between the threads so when we send a data from the main thread to the worker or vice versa what happens is that 
a new clone of the data will be created and that will be passed to the other thread. So in case we update the data in one thread, it will not be reflected in the other. So they make use of something called structured cloning while transferring the data. Most of the data formats which are supported in JSON are allowed for sending between the threads as well. But some data structures like functions and all those things we cannot we will not be able to send it across the threads. Another kind of data that can be transferred between the threads is the transferable object. So this mainly constitutes of something like array buffer. The significance of transferable object is that once we transfer this particular data from one thread to another, the data ceases to exist in the sender thread. So in case we are sending an array buffer from main thread to the worker thread, once the data re reaches the worker thread, the main thread data is destroyed. Similarly, vice versa, when we send from the worker to the main, once the main receives the data, the worker data will be destroyed. So this helps in efficient handling of memory. Now let's take a look at another keyword that is available for the workers, that is the import scripts. This keyword can be used for importing any dependencies that needs to be accessed within our worker thread. So in this example, what I want is I want to access the load-js. So I can use the import scripts and I am providing the CDN location to the load-min.js. Now what the import script does is it will load this JS file that is done in a synchronous manner and once this is executed then only it will execute the remaining lines of the worker. So here I have added the import scripts and I am logging the underscore which will be the global variable that is available once the load hash is loaded. Now within our utility for generating the Fibonacci what I have done is I have replaced the original function with a much better version which makes use of the load hash functions that is reduce and all those things and here again I am declaring a variable that is underscore and I will be able to access all the methods within the load hash. Now let's run this application and see. Here you can see that the place where I log the load hash object that is underscore I am able to see the entire file itself. And once the load hash is loaded, we will be able to access all the all the methods which are available in load hash. One more change I have made is when I click the send worker message, previously we were sending the message when the application was loaded. Now the message will be sent once I click the send worker message. Here you can see that the worker got the message and the worker calculated the Fibonacci number and it returned it back to the main thread. The worker has a method called terminate which we can see here. So each worker has a method called terminate. What it does is it will effectively terminate the worker and once it is terminated we will not be able to send messages between the threads. So I am clicking the terminate worker now, when I try to send worker message, you can see that there is no message being sent. Similarly, we have an own error handler that is available in the worker, which can be used for handling any errors that occurred within our worker thread. So here what I am doing is, I am throwing an error here. Now let's see what happens when I try to send a message to the worker. We can see that an error message has been logged. So this message is effectively the console which I have given here. Error message received from worker and it is showing the entire error. Error event which consists of our message which we had thrown from our worker. The worker which we saw till now is called a dedicated web worker because this worker is available only within the scope of this particular browser that is this tab. 
so when we load the page you can see that the worker file is loaded as a separate js and all its dependencies are also called which we will be able to see within our network tab now let's see why it is called a dedicated worker so i here i have two instances of the localhost 4200 running and let me bring up the console so you can see the console here now what i am going to do is when i click the send worker message you can see that only the particular the current context that is the current page will receive the message and the console is logged only here similarly when i click on this particular instance it will the message will be displayed only in this instance so now let's see how we can actually share the worker between multiple tabs or multiple instances of the browser so here we make use of something called a shared worker for creating a shared worker we do not have any angular cli commands the shared worker is not fully supported by all the browsers and here if we need to create a worker we need to create it manually so i have gone ahead and created a shared worker file this is almost similar to our uh, web worker but some changes are there which i will go through one thing to note is that here i am making use of the global object that is the context of this worker that is self and within that i am attaching the on connect so in the previous worker i have made use of the add event listener on the message so here instead i am making use of the on connect and here what we need to do is that once we get the message it will have a key called ports first item of that ports array will contain the port of our current browser so the current browser in which our shared worker is executing once we get hold of that port here what i am doing is i am creating a connections array and i am pushing the port to the connection so why i am doing is that since this shared worker will be shared across multiple instances of the browser this connections will hold the port of all the instances of the browser so when i need to send a message to all the instances of the browser i just need to loop through this connections and send a post message so that each instance of the browser will receive the message in case i didn't do this and i just send the message to the port it will effectively work the same way as a normal dedicated web worker once we get hold of the port we can add the on message which is similar to our dedicated worker and here we will be able to add a call back which will again receive the event that's a message event and everything is else is similar we will get the data key within which we will be able to access the action which is our custom object or custom data which we are sending and here i am checking whether in case i am getting the generate fibonacci i will be generating a fibonacci number and as i previously mentioned i will be sending it across to all the browser instances similarly if i get an action called terminate i will be closing the shared worker so once i close the shared worker the shared worker won't be available for all the instances so this is effectively similar to our worker dot terminate now if we go to our app component dot ts i have added some code for initiating the shared worker which is very much similar to what we did for the web worker and here i am checking whether the type shared worker is defined and in case it is defined i am creating a new instance of the shared worker with the url that is the app dot shared worker dot ts and the remaining things are pretty much similar and i am getting that instance and i am assigning to the shared worker property when we listen to the messages on the main thread again we need to access the property port and within that property we need to attach the on message 
So the syntax of the callback, everything is pretty much similar to the web worker itself. Only difference is that we will be attaching it to the port. Similarly, we have the on message error. And in case the shared worker is not available, you need to provide a fallback so that the application will work properly. Now here in the application, there are two buttons that is a send shared worker message where we will be making use of the port.post message and we will be sending the exact same payload which we used for the web worker and we have the terminate shared worker. Since we do not have a direct terminate method, we are sending an action terminate which will in turn call the self.close which will terminate the shared worker. Now let's run this application and see. So here I am going to click the send shared worker message. Now you can see that actually the message is received in both the instances of the browser. So this is the difference between a dedicated web worker and a shared worker. In this way we will be able to communicate across multiple tabs of a browser. Now if you open the network tab actually you will not be able to see any reference to the shared worker. So in order to see the shared worker you need to go to Chrome inspect And here we have a tab called share workers. So here only we will be able to insect the shared worker instance of our application. So here we need to give the inspect and you will be able to see all the messages that the worker is logging. So in case I am sending a message here, send worker message you can see that that message is getting logged on the worker side here within our Chrome inspect instead of the actual tab. Similarly, when we terminate a shared worker, shared worker got terminated. When we press the terminate shared worker, what happens is that our shared worker is terminated and neither of our instances which makes use of the shared worker won't be able to send the message. So in effect the shared worker has been terminated and in case you go to the Chrome inspect you won't be able to see any shared worker instance. Hope you were able to get a good understanding of how we can make use of web workers and shared workers within our Angular application. See you soon. Thank you.